Story 1, ex-wife who cheated and left me 20 years ago wants to reconnect over dinner, now she's apologizing and asking for another chance, but I'm unsure if I can trust her. I, 44 male with my ex-wife, 44 female who left me 20 years ago, asked me out to dinner into her place tomorrow and I don't know what to do. So I dated Don for 3 years. We tied the knot at 20 and were married for 3 years. We had some struggles. We both had a lot of growing up to do. She was working a minimum wage job and trying to finish her career. I was just finishing up my career by then. After three years, her attitude changed and she became distant. She was asked surely and physically said as a child. Also, I don't know if that matters. Anyway, it came to light that she was having an affair with this guy who she worked with. She ripped my heart out, left me and went to live with him in his parents' house. She started doing doctor gigs and has a kid with him. I was left devastated and broken and had trust issues over the years. Well, she added me on Facebook a few months ago and I got divorced again two years ago. We have been chatting and she said she's sorry for everything she did and she would like to take me out to dinner and would understand the fine declined or never want to see her again but that she would really love to see me. She is a lawyer now, is divorced and has her own kids. I didn't contact her much at first but she likes literally everything I put up. She has started every conversation telling me she's sorry for the hurt she caused me. My kids are beautiful and you look great. I don't feel any ill will towards her anymore. But this is all a shock to me. She mentioned that we could go back to her place afterward. She has tried to contact me over the years but I have blocked it. I feel all these emotions of sadness and anger. I also feel like I would like to see her again for closure. Haven't seen her in person for 20 years. I have gotten over her. This just feels so weird. Well, first of all, it's very sad that you both went through different trauma. For you, it's the trauma that she inflicted on you. And for her, well, it's her childhood. Now that may explain things. It still doesn't excuse what she did to you. Now I can totally understand your confusion. Yeah, you have gotten over her. It's been 20 years. But this also was a very important person in your life who not only put you through hell but that you left. So yeah, the conflict here is big. The only reason I would go sit down with her is if it gives you closure. And after that dinner, you feel better. I wouldn't go to her house. First of all, I wouldn't start up a relationship with her again. I would just let her say her piece, say she's sorry in person, and then you get your closure and you're done and you move on. Now you may think, well, you know, we could give it another go. I mean, she's a whole new person. I'm over her. It's been 20 years. But really, do you want to go through that? I mean, the thing is, you would need to do a lot of work together as a couple to get over your past. A simple, I'm sorry, works as a closure for you to move on, but to start a new relationship with her and to give it another go. That's a whole other business. And honestly, I just wouldn't go through it. But of course, OP, that is your choice to make. I'm just saying that if I was in your shoes, I'd just get my closure and then carry on with my life. And what do you guys think about this whole situation? How would you go about it? What would you do if you were an option? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Deleted says she's an aging, twice divorced cheater with kids from another man, and she's automatically at risk for relapse if she ever falls on hard times again. She's far, far past the point where she has a reasonable chance of a good relationship. If she pursues you, it will likely be because she doesn't think she can do better any longer. Keep that in mind. Don't take someone back who has stolen so much of your life. Tony Lee 77 says, I don't think it would be a bad idea to see her for closure reason. I've had a situation where I've been dumped, thought about in mistakes for ages. And when I met her, she wasn't the person who I missed and found closure. Similar thing happened to one of my other exes as well. She always contacted me, missed me, blah blah. And after we met since breaking up two years, she never contacted me again. But that would be the only reason why I would see her. Closure and benefit for you. I certainly 100% would not start any kind of relationship with someone who cheated on me like that. I would even unfriend her as after 8 says it sounds like she may want to start things up again. And that's probably a really bad idea if it's been 20 years and you are still feeling hurt. Closure may not be a bad idea, but she sounds like she used to be incredibly selfish. So chances are she's doing this for her benefit. She's in her 40s with kids divorced and likely lonely. If she hits on you, run for the hills. Skeeter 4 says 20 years is a long time to be bitter. Go out to dinner and see what you think. You may like her. You may find that after 20 years, you are glad she ran off on you. Note that she probably knows she did a crappy thing and is trying to get closure too. Also, it's just dinner. You can leave anytime you want. And Captain Big Nut says potential scenario. You decide what the hell and go to dinner. At dinner, she talks about how you were the one and that she screwed up royally by leaving you. You realize that you have absolutely zero feelings for her and that whatever attraction you had for her a long time ago is now dead and buried. 
You reject her attempt to rekindle things and walk out of her house after an awkward hug, realizing her last hope of a good life just spurned her. She goes full bunny boiler mode and spends the next six months stalking you and calling you and showing up at your work, announcing loudly to everyone that she is still your wife demon and that she will not be ignored. But that probably won't happen. The additional information from OP's comments. I think I mostly just want to believe that I'm a catch at this age and that she has changed over the years. She has attempted to contact me through letters and phone calls, but I never responded. Really? No, I'm never getting married again. It's really not worth it at my age anymore. I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to see it as an attractive woman with a good career who is interested in me. I feel more confident nowadays. She also makes more money than me, and I really don't know what I could give her that she would want. I'm not really desperate, mostly just curious. All right? So the community gave different angles, starting from just do it for you. Don't do it for anything else. Another person said, maybe give it a shot. And one last scenario that was just really weird and movie creepy. And apparently OP is mostly curious about meeting her and seeing what she has to say. Update. Long story short, I did meet her. We talked for hours and I felt better getting some answers throughout the night. It was emotional, mostly on her part. She apologized many times and asked about my kids, what I am doing now and how I've been. She told me she's had counseling to work through her personal issues over the last few years, and it's helped her tremendously. I asked her a bunch of hard questions. I needed the answers to. I actually wrote them down previously. She answered them honestly and didn't hold anything back. She knows the affair is completely on her and that I was devastated for some time after our divorce. I wanted to know why she added me in the first place a few months ago and started speaking to me again. She told me she always wanted to apologize in person to my face and thought it would be inappropriate. While we were both married, she also told me that I was the only guy in her life that she ever had a special connection with and that cheating and losing me was the worst thing she ever did and the biggest regret she had. She also didn't blame her rough childhood on this, although she did have a messed up abuse v childhood. Still, I told her I forgave her, but I'm not ready for anything right now. I appreciate her taking me out to dinner and I enjoyed it. I didn't go to her place. She told me she wanted another chance but wanted to do it differently this time. Although I do find her attractive and have always cared about her, I'm not ready right now. So let's just be friends for the time being. I don't know what she's expecting, but if she's expecting to be treated like a queen, she will be disappointed. I'm not some desperate dude who is going to whine and dine a chick just to sleep with her. She made it clear she wanted me to spend the night with her and I declined. Also, I'm not just a little boy who holds resentment and anger towards people who aren't worth it. And if that makes me a Charlie Brown, then so be it. Another anyone else's puppet and have way more self-respect for myself than in the end. I had a free meal, a woman apologizing for how much she hurt me, and basically she told me how great I am. Also, I've come a long way. I look at myself as a catch nowadays. I can do better than her and I'm not codependent anymore. It was just nice to see her. And if she wants to remain friends, that's cool. If not, it's whatever. I got what I needed. It's good she's getting help for deep-rooted issues and her insecurity. I don't hold any ill will towards her anymore and too old for that lol. We hugged and she kissed my cheek and that was it. A tearful goodbye. We haven't seen each other in 20 years. Finally, some of the comments were people calling me a cuckold and other things. I don't really understand how I divorced her when she left me to be with the other guy and blocked her for all of these years, even after attempted contact with her. So, say what you want, I guess. Thanks all for the advice. I understand some of you might disagree with my decision, but I enjoyed my dinner and getting some answers I needed about our past. It may or may not evolve into something else, but I'm not ready for anything right now. Well opened. Say it's a definite positive update. You got the closure that you wanted and you're not hooked. Your self-esteem didn't take a hit and you're going to move forward. So good for you. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in the future. Don't get back in a relationship with her and take care. Story 2, My 26 Female Mom 54 female doesn't want anything to do with my husband. 30 male. So the title is a bit of a hyperbole because it isn't as malicious as it sounds. Anyway, my husband and I have been married for almost a year. My husband and I have a great relationship. We communicate well and spend a lot of time together. We have minimal issues. If there are issues, they get addressed and are usually about my tendency to be very tidy while he is okay with more mess. Relatively unimportant issues, in other words. We live kind of far from my mom. Three hours compared to my siblings who live in the same town or surrounding towns. For some context, though, in the last year and a half, we lost one of my brothers, my dad and both of my maternal grandparents. So my mom has had a rough go of things and I am fully understanding that she's a bit odd lately. Anyway, for Mother's Day, I was going down to see her. I was going to bring my husband, but she seemed a little disappointed as she wanted to hang out with just me. Or that's just what I assumed. 
So I said to my husband, hey if you're okay with staying home while I visit my mom, I'll just go on my own. He was totally great with that as some video gaming tournament was on and he was happy to stay home. So that worked out fine. Then anytime I came to visit, my mom would act similarly and I'd make the same choice and my husband was totally cool with it still. He doesn't hate my family or anything, but he enjoys the house and the alone time I get it. But then my nana died and my mom asked if I could just come down and help her. And it's easier alone and… yeah. So we had a big Irish wake and my brothers came out and said how they feel. My husband doesn't like them. They haven't bonded. They feel like my husband is not wanting to be a part of the family, which yeah, all of my sibling spouses are super bonded compassionately. My husband has no family, so he's not used to the idea for starters. So my brothers insisted that he come to the next gathering and that he properly bonded. Cut to this coming weekend. It's my mom's birthday and my brothers. So there's a gathering. We were going to spend the weekend. My mom took her birthday off work so she and I could have a girl's day. That would be fine. Except then my husband would have to come or stay alone all day in my mom's house with no computer or anything. So I called her and said, hey, husband is coming too. She sounded so disappointed. So I talked to my husband. The decision now is for me to drive there Friday morning, have a girl's day with my mom, drive back home that night and spend the night at home. My husband and I will drive back on Saturday afternoon for my brother's party. I told my mom that plan and she sounded so excited. And that's okay. But I want to get to the bottom of this. And that's why I'm here. Is this abnormal? Should I talk to her about it? Is there a problem here I'm missing? My mom has never had any issues with my husband. She really has never said anything negative about him. But it feels weird to me that she wants next to nothing to do with him. Maybe that's not weird. I don't know. Help. Thanks in advance. Well, Opie, from what you tell us, the gatherings have mostly been weeks. And now this birthday. So I'd say, well, it's nothing against your husband. It's just that the situation is not necessarily warranting a really special bonding time between her and him. What I mean by this is during the weeks. Well, why would she need to be focused on your husband? He should just be there to pay his respects and support you. But if you don't need it, then yeah, maybe he'd get in the way because they haven't bonded very much. And she'd feel weird about it. Nothing against him again. And for her birthday. Well, she wanted a girl's day with you. Why would he have to go? Also, why can't he be alone at your mom's house? Doesn't he have a phone? If he doesn't have a computer, why can't he go out for a beer with one of your brothers or go do something in your town? He's not a child. He's a 30-year-old man. He can take care of himself. Or in the case that he just wants to go there on set. Is there a train service or maybe a bus that he can take? Why do you need to drive three hours back and forth? That just sounds like a waste of gas. Now, don't get me wrong. I've got nothing against your husband. I just think that he can stay alone at your mom's house if he needs to drive with you on Friday. He should be fine. Or that he could take a train or a bus to get there on the next day. And what do you guys think about OP's situation? How would you try to solve it? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they say. Commander Fellowship says, wait, sorry, why can't your husband just take a tablet or laptop or book or something and go up with you on the Friday? I live separate from my folks, and I love doing stuff with just my mom. The first few visits home, my husband was a bit nervous, but now he just hangs out at their place and does his own thing. I really think you need to just start incorporating him into parts of the visits and carve out one-on-one -on -one time in a way that doesn't result in 12 hours of driving and a weekend. Moonlight Racer says, do you guys only have one car? Is that why you can't drive separately? Also, why isn't there any form of entertainment in your mom's house? Can you arrange for Wi-Fi or cable? Does she have a car she could borrow? Or you take hers and he gets her car? I don't think that would work. I mean, the mom would need to go pick up OP, right? Daisy Van says you need to talk to her. Tell her that you and your brothers are starting to feel like your husband isn't part of the family. Because every family occasion, she seems not to want him around. Ask her why that is and take things from there. I think you should talk to your brothers and see if your mom has talked to them about your husband. Maybe see if you can get their perspective on it. And messy? Mom says no. It's not normal. And you shouldn't be running all over the place to accommodate your mom's weirdness. There should be a healthy mix of entire family time and a small serving of girl time. Stop dancing around your mom and just bring your husband along. He can be social without a computer or go hang out with your brothers and your mom can be social and not exclusionary. Alright? Well, the community had a lot of things to say to OP regarding this whole thing from you. Your husband should be able to get there by his own. To spend his own time to her mom is weird. Update. So Friday came and I drove alone to my mom's. She and I started talking a little bit and she opened my gift and cried a bit because it was sappy. But yeah, she said that she didn't want to go out except for lunch but that she really needed help with something. 
Apparently she had been putting off going through my dad's closet and decided to do so now because a local business was taking clothing donations to Houston and she thought my dad would really want that. He definitely would have. So I helped her go through his clothes, which was very emotional, and she started talking about how she had met someone. Apparently she had a new boyfriend and she was afraid to tell me. I'm so happy for her. But I also understand why she just wanted me there. It would have been pretty awkward with my husband there. But I did ask her if she had any issue with him and she seemed very genuine when she said no but that she misses us time so I thought that was a good thing. Anyway, my husband and I came back answering, did the whole party thing. We had a lot of fun and he bonded finally. So all is well in summary. He went to the important family event. He did not go to the girls day thing where my mom and I went through my dad's closet and she opened up about things that were uncomfortable for her to open up about. He played games with my brothers for hours. They enjoyed themselves. It won't be the last party he goes to. He won't be left out. The only negative thing that occurred was me having to drive a bit extra but I don't mind that. It's not a real negative. Thanks for all your comments while OP happy update. I mean yeah, you did have to drive extra but still, your mom had some special alone time with you to tell you what's up and what's going on in her life and also kind of get some closure with your dad's clothes and your husband bonded with your brothers, which is a good thing. So here's wishing all of you the best in the future. Story 3, Divorcing my wife after she demands a third kid after my vasectomy reversal refusal, because we've only agreed on two. My wife and I have two kids, 9-6. After the second one she said she was done having kids even though we had discussed having three prior to marriage. We talked about it for a long time but I love her and I agreed to change our plans. She had an IUD but we still used condoms. She really didn't want to get pregnant. About four years ago we agreed that I would get a vasectomy. It made sense since it was a minor surgery unlike her getting tubal ligation. It went well and after I healed up I went for testing and it worked. If you ever get a vasectomy please do the follow-up testing. My friend from college thought he was good to go and now he has a kid. So she got her IUD removed and we stopped using condoms and life was good. Until her sister Reach had another kid. Then one of her friends had a baby. And my wife went nuts. She wants another baby. She made a mistake and wants me to go get my vasectomy reversed. Or to get my sperm harvested and get IVF. The fuck I am getting a needle in my balls or another operation. And we are actually doing great financially right now. Her taking two years off from work would be a big hit. I said we could look at adoption or fostering but that I was not interested in her having another kid. She tried bringing up our agreement from before we got married but I shut that down immediately. So for the last four months our marriage has been a simmering battle about another kid. She has had her parents over, my parents over, her sisters and their families. All trying to convince me that I should give in. Fuck that noise. I am almost 44. In 12 years my youngest will be starting their career or their post-secondary education. I can see the finish line now. I did offer all the family members that chimed in a fun option. I agreed to get TASA, sperm harvesting, if all the men who agreed with my wife did it as well. Even if they ha, d working ball tubes. At their own expense. And that they pool their money and pay for all bills related to IVF and the raising of the third kid. They all say I'm being ridiculous and petty. I reminded them that as a unit they all agreed with my wife when she said she was fine with two kids. They wanted to have input then and it was free. I said this decision would require skin in the game. It all came to a head last weekend. My folks had the boys so we could have a nice couple of days to ourselves. Instead my wife and I got into a screaming match. She said I obviously didn't love her if I wasn't willing to do this. That we are well off enough to afford all the expenses of another kid. Blah blah blah. I told her no in no uncertain terms. We had money in the bank for retirement and fun. And that's what it was for. Not for her to get her hormones calmed down. She accused me of caring more about money than her happiness. I reminded her that she was the one who insisted that having a third kid would demolish her career. She started crying and saying I was an asshole for denying her another kid. That it was not that much of a sacrifice. I finally unloaded and said that a divorce would be cheaper for me than another kid. That shocked her into silence. We have barely spoken since. I think I broke her. Our retirement funds are separate, our house is in both our names and she earns slightly more than I do. If we get divorced I will get 50-50 custody. I would want it. She would get no alimony and I might get a few dollars in child support. I feel shitty threatening her with divorce. I love her and want to spend the rest of my life with her but I am sick and tired of having her make our reproductive decisions like my opinion does not matter. A bunch of you keep asking how I would tell my sons that I am divorcing their mom because she wants another baby. I just typed this as a reply but I actually like it enough to paste it here so you can stop asking. Mommy and daddy agreed, before getting married that we would have three babies. But then mommy got an important job and did not want to and I quote waste her time having another kid and wrecking her body again. Daddy was sad so he held on for 4 years hoping she would change her mind. 
But then they talked and she said it was a permanent decision. Since daddy loved mommy he did not want her to be hurt even a tiny bit. So daddy went to the doctor. At the doctor they gave daddy medicine so he would not feel pain. Then they cut his ball sack open a tiny bit and burned the connection between his balls and the rest of his body. Daddy could not feel it but he fucking still remembers that smell. Then mommy did not need to do anything to not have a baby anymore and she was happy. For almost two years. Then Auntie Joy and Annie Carmen and mommy's friend Maddie all had baby girls. And it made mommy sad and jealous that the girls were getting all the attention. So mommy talked to daddy and said go to the doctor and have him fuck with your ball some more. This made daddy upset because the fuck I will. Mommy got lots of people to try and tell him to change his mind. But daddy is happy with his life and told them all to ingest a gigantic satchel of Richards. Mommy spent four months day and night bugging daddy nonstop. Then remember when you stayed with Oma and Opa? Mommy and daddy were going to have a fun weekend just doing mommy and daddy stuff. Until she just would not fucking drop it. So daddy told her that if him and his sons were not enough for her then he would say that they should go their separate ways. But daddy loves you boys very much and you are more than enough for him and he will always be there for you. JFC. I would never actually say that to my sons. Once again it was just a response to all the not so bright people asking how I would explain it to them. Odds are I would take them to a family counselor so that I could tell them and then deal with some of the aftermath.